You know, I found a new purpose after retirement here at the Senior Center. And, the, you know, there's an opportunity to engage, to do stuff, um, to meet people. I have met tons of people my age here, and it's been enlightening, it's been fun, making new friends. Oh, the Senior Center is my second home. I always put the senior center in Lowell as my priority. I always write down the calendar what I can do before I go somewhere else. Very beautiful. They have fitness. I come to join the bone builder twice a week. People here, they, I can say they're friendly. And then they're easy life too. It's not too much complicated. No, after I found out. Myself too, I'm very, I'm very simple, you know, not looking for any kind of uh, confusing life neither. I want to be survived the rest of my life. I'm retiring now. The rest of my retiring life, I want to be free, you know. Very welcome uh, center. The people mostly, they speak different language and we learn from each other and make friends. Especially every Friday, they have like social time. The guy there, they play DJ for volunteer. Somewhere else you go, you need to pay to get DJ, dance, and food, but here, free Friday. Well, I um, started coming here because I like to shoot pool, and I noticed that they got some good competition here. They got some good players. It's a good place here. It's uh, peaceful. A lot of good people, got a lot of good players, and I really enjoy coming here to, oh, you also get some free meals, which are excellent. Yeah, so, and uh, people here are very respectful, very good people. Where do you find joy in uh, <laughs> At all the different senior centers, whether I'm in Lowell, Chelmsford, Tewksbury, Bill Ricker. Um, I, anytime there's a dance, I'm there, drink it. Um, just went to senior prom and drank it. Um, I used to do a lot of traveling with the Lowell. Uh, since COVID, we don't have that so much, and a lot of things have changed. Uh, I'm hoping we get back to doing all the things we used to, but, you know, life changes, and we still go on. So as long as I can dance, I guess I'm happy. Uh, I see them on a regular basis when I do the classes, and I do the, the bowling. That's regular people at bowling, regular people at the painting. Um, always meeting people in the collage. Sometimes new people come in, and then you have the older people we start it with, and then we hang out and we talk, and then we see each other here with, with, for lunch and, and um, discuss what we're going to do. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Oh, very good. I, I pay my time here playing pool, go to program, counseling, everything. I want to be quiet, but I like music. But when, when I go to the party, everything, oh, very hard. Very loud, you know, I like to, to, to enjoy the party. But when I'm alone, very quiet, and then, you know, really on my own, you know, sensitive, and then, like I said. I mean, I was here when, when this round of the art community got started in, in the early, the late 90, 1990s. I can't imagine being in Chicago or being in Denver or being in Boston and sitting in meetings with city councilors about what we wanted for the arts community. I mean, who does that? Getting that kind of support and being able, you know, if I have problems, being able to, to call a city councilor and say, hey, look, 
we've got this issue. What can we do about it? And get action. Or talk to a state rep. And I don't think that people who grew up here realize that. I don't think they realize just how amazing and precious that engagement is. Recent um, developments here in the city have been uh, outstanding. I mean, it, there's, there's so much change, it's hard to even quantify it. You know, it's, it's been, you know, in terms of um, environment, it's changing completely. I mean, every day. Like I said, I worked and just took care of my daughter, so I really didn't pay too much of the surroundings. I mean, um, I just existed. <laughs> you know, day to day, you know, go to work, take my daughter to school, come back home, and everything's close by, the stores, the shopping, you know, transportation, um, all of that. It, it's just within close proximity, so... Yeah, it's easy. Well, Lowell, a while back when I came here in the 80s, there was some violence, you know, but the city has grown. Uh, UMass Lowell has helped a lot. The city of Lowell, they built a lot of new uh, buildings, a lot of new colleges, and the city has grown. Since the day I came here, a lot of nice things have happened to Lowell. I love coming here. I can dance. I can socialize. When, and somebody will say to me, you're not dancing today. Well, that's because I got talking too much. <laughs> uh, just, I appreciate the friendship, the easy camaraderie that's not as easy when you're younger. Can you touch on that a little bit more? Well, first of all, you're bringing up your kids, so you're, you're busy. You have to work, unfortunately. Uh, some people don't, but I, I know I had to, uh, to help with keeping food on the table. I had five kids. <laughs> so, you know, you, um, you know, and I think just trying to get out and be, have the friends that you have today. It's, uh, you have friends, definitely. And I know I have some wonderful friends that are no longer with me, but um, now their kids still call me auntie. And I've no relation to them, but because I was always there. They, they, so, you know, just things change through the years, and that's part of life. Being in the schools here in Lowell, I was always uh, head of the media center, or the library. I was the library, head librarian, media center person. But um, <clears throat> my education actually went far beyond that. I was, I was not like aiming at being a library media specialist, stuff, but it, it was something that I was kind of, it fit, you know, so I, did, I just kept doing those kinds of things, you know, which brought out cameras and, you know, uh, media and, and you know, developing things. And, and some of that ended up, uh, you know, good enough to get me a job. <laughs> you know? you know? Just try to help myself the most because um, I got accident like I said and then my mind you know I'm not memorized too well like before and then it, it's just so so strong in my mind after age you know after the people that get age right memorize memorizing or whatever you know hard and then recognize people in the past too. So I got to be strong, you know, to be resurviving. If not so, we're gonna go completely down on it. <laughs> I'm planning to retire, but for now I'm working for Market Basket part-time and you know, it's a real nice place to work for and it's five minutes away from home. So I could even walk to work. Before I worked for another company for 23 years, I'm not gonna mention the name, because after 23 years, they let me go. But that's life. You know, we're just a number. Like I say, you know, wherever you are, you're just a number. Whenever they want, they let you go, you know. But I gave them 23 years of my life, and I did the best I could for that company. I, when the, my first camp, I was in Michigan. 
Yeah, and one of my husband friends say, Lo, have a lot of job in during the 80s. I came at the 80s. So I looking for work. I like to work. We work, work, leave your stuff. It's good to make money, you know. When you come from the poor country, we, you want to survive. So any kind of job, I do it. I work like three times, three uh, shift job. Yeah, make my body close up right away sometimes. I didn't take care of myself, but now I'm retired. I'm better take advantage to, to the center like this. I remember when I was uh, getting ready, getting towards 65, and I said to my husband, when can I retire? <laughs> and he said, as soon as you get your um, Medicare. I said, oh good, I'll be 65. My birthday happened to fall on a Sunday. That Friday on the 10th of February, I was out of work. I gave my notice. I had given it to him about a month ago, and I left, and I've just been enjoying life ever since. But you got to put a lot away. Put your money away and make sure you you um, care about, you know, you just can't live for that day. You have to think about all of it. And I was lucky. I had a husband who did very much put things away and think about me. In Cambodia, you know, more of the culture, the older siblings usually take care of the younger siblings at hard work don't have much time to enjoy themselves, they take care of the siblings. So a lot of work going on, but I'm good, I am live in the city, I have opportunity to go to school, I go to a college, uh, like a two-year college in my country, so I know a little bit background English, because we learn English like once hour a week for the high school. And we learned French in third grade. I, I learned French, but I cannot speak. When I was playing baseball I, and softball, here in Lowell, we used to play on, um, it used to be the Clamani Park, and we used to play softball there. And I had a lot of friends, and I really enjoyed the game of baseball. I played since I was young. In Chicago, I used to play in the police league. And then I came here, and. And I play also in Puerto Rico, and also I love boxing, so I have met Mickey Ward, Dickie Acklin, and a lot of the great boxers here from Lowell. And this, I love sports, so this is basically what I do, you know, I entertain myself by playing pool and going to the games, spinners games, and also, you know, working hard because this is what life is all about here. You got to work, you got to earn a living. For, for, forget, forget. I forget a lot of time, things a lot of time, you know. Yeah. I, I, I boxed before, professional boxing. Yeah, the fighter, yeah. Yeah, I went to Lower West Engine, uh, Ata Romaro. I, I worked there with Mike Warburg, Christian Bell, everything with that people. Yeah, I'm meeting a long time, yeah. Good people. Wow. Uh, yeah, there's several restaurants that um, I used to love to go to. Uh, the Royal Steakhouse in downtown Lowell and um, the Old Spear House. That was one of my favorites. And uh, it's no longer even there, but I have a lot of memories in that place. Growing up, us neighborhoods, we all hung out together. Uh, we'd go knock on the door and say, hey, can this one come out? Let's go. And then we go all go to the next house and bring another one. And the whole neighborhood, we all hung out together. We'd go to the park together. We'd go to the movies together. We played in each other's yards. We had a neighbor that lived to my right, and um, they had a huge yard, and she used to have picnics there and have all the kids there. And we used to play games all the time. Um, we had fun. We had a neighbor who... Um, his father used to help train with the Red Sox, and every once in a while he'd bring home one of the the, the, the players from the Red Sox. And um, it, we had a lot of good fun. I mean, we'd go to the library and hang out back there. And I definitely want people to consider uh, not fighting. This no, absolutely doesn't do anybody any good. Let's just, you know, appreciate what we have and and uh, enjoy our friendship. 
It's just, there's too much fighting in the world. And we just need to be more loving and, you know, think twice. Sometimes just shut your mouth. That, that sometimes can save a lot. Bite that tongue once in a while. <laughs> I don't know if that's good advice, but we'll try. Well, for me, you know, I would love for the youth to get into sports because um, Lowell had a boxing team here and uh, the gym closed down. I wish that they would bring it back so they could have the youth busy doing something positive, which is uh, baseball, basketball, soccer, you know, make leagues, and also boxing, which was a good thing for the youths to learn, to learn to protect themselves. I'd like to see cross-generation cross conversations and about attitudes, about art, um, about, you know, the city, because I don't see that, you know. I mean, I'm on Facebook, but, you know, Young people are not, you know, they, they move too fast. They're not on Facebook. There's a huge communication problem, not even across generations, just all the way around, because in this place, I'd say, you know, maybe 25% of the people have email. You know, maybe that same 25, maybe 30% have cell phones. Um, they don't have computers. They, you know, their their worldview is shaped by what they see on TV or what they hear on the radio. And everybody's in their little niches in their bubbles. And I, we've got to get, we got to break the bubbles. As much as everybody wants to believe that everyone's got access to technology, and it's going to get really, really bad now that the ACP is running out of money. What's that? American Con Connectivity Program. That gave a, uh, a $30 credit to low-income individuals so they could have internet. They could have online access. And it ran out of money. May, of this, this month was the last month. So you're going to see all these people who got cell phones and got Chromebooks and all of this through all kinds of programs all of a sudden, they're not going to have that online access anymore. They're going to lose that because they, they couldn't afford it beforehand. Every life got their own style of making money. But in the meaning of uh, what they call the main, the main manner of life, of lifestyle, share, give people a break, don't, uh, don't push them down. Have them have right like a you. They are human beings like a you. Give them a chance to breathe and then survive and then eat a good peace and then good freedom. And then uh, be friendly. Stay in happiness, okay? Everybody, we are our own right to survive at the same level of life. You know? No one, no one uh, extraordinary than the other. The same level, see, same meaning of lifestyle. They want what they need, what they want, but they try to, um, you know, understand them what they want. If you can help yourself, support, but help yourself first. <laughs>